I bought this Akai S612 sampler in the early 90s, and at about that time, people were dumping their 12-bit samplers and buying 16-bit samplers, which was great for me because I desperately wanted a sampler, and this is all I could afford at the time. However, it's starting to really show its age. Um, all of the faders and pots need cleaning. Uh, the digital controls are jumping around all over the place and the analog signals have a lot of uh, crackle and static on them. And the disk drive doesn't even work at all. Uh, I'll give a demo of how the disk drive works or doesn't work. So I'll just put in a quick disk. They use quick disks, not floppies. And press load. And it just spins and makes this awful noise, and it'll stay like that forever until you turn it off. It will still sample, though. Uh, let me make a quick sample of my voice. I have the microphone going to uh, the uh, sample input. Akai S612 sampler. So I'll put it in looping mode and set the manual splice point so that it loops the whole sample. And then I'm going to have to play around with the uh, output level control because it's quite staticky. Yeah, trying to find the sweet spot here. Akai S612 sampler. Akai S612 sampler. Akai S612 sampler. It does work, but definitely the pots need cleaning. Another thing I noticed um, just a few minutes ago, actually, is the uh, the line out on the front panel is pushed in. And I'm wondering if that's also shorting out, causing issues uh, with the output. There are two line outs. There's one on the front panel, one on the back panel, and they're just wired in parallel. So at this point, I'll disassemble the disk drive to try to figure out what's happening with that. And I'll also disassemble the main unit and clean all the pots and faders. After I disassembled everything, I reconnected the quick disk drive and uh, flipped it on its side so that I could see the mechanism on the bottom. And it became uh, apparent right away that the drive belt is quite loose. If I move the drive wheel, I should see the flywheel moving as well, and also the mechanism should move, but instead nothing happens. There's a quick disk in the drive right now, so if I hit the load button, I can see that the drive wheel is moving, but the, the belt isn't catching. So let me just turn this off. So it's pretty apparent that I'll have to replace the belt. Another thing that happened when I opened uh, up the main unit is this clip came out. This clip fell out and it was just rattling around inside the chassis. And uh, I realized that it was the clip that was holding the line out jack in place. So that's why it pushed in to the main unit. So I'll be able to reconnect the line out jack. And now that everything's open, I have easy access to all the faders and pots. So I'll be able to clean them. I'll narrate here in the background while you watch me work. I bought a generic rubber belt replacement kit online and found a belt that matched the old one in the drive. Uh, removing the old belt was fairly easy, but it was a bit fiddly to replace it with the new one. But 
but uh, once the new one was in place, it was a relief to see the drive working again. The main sampling unit is quite modular in design, and the pots are mounted on separate boards, so to get access to them, all I had to do was remove the Molex connectors and mounting screws, and then just lift the boards out. It's a super design. With the pots out of the way, I had clear access to remount the output jack. All I had to do was clip it in place. And here's a beauty shot with a can of deoxid right before I clean the pots and the faders. Now all that's left with the main sampling unit is to reassemble everything. I use those uh, small bags with the numbered cards to keep track of screws and other parts during disassembly and reassembly so I don't have any missing screws at the end. And here's the front panel going back on. And now the case. And finally, all the knobs, keeping them aligned with the uh, front panel graphics. The quick disk drive unit is a bit more complicated to assemble, and it has a lot of nested parts and brackets. The, uh, the design of the quick disk unit isn't quite as elegant as the main unit. It's all a bit clunky with a lot of wasted space. Finally, the case on the disk unit. Everything's put back together, the controls are smooth, there's no static on the output, and the disk drive works. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.